Hello guys, in this video tutorial we'll be talking about uh, the process of DNA recombination and recombinant DNA technology to produce a plasmid. A plasmid is a small circular piece of DNA found in bacteria which is extra chromosomal uh, in nature and can replicate itself. The plasmid encodes genes such as resistant to the antibiotic called ampicillin. The plasmid also has a region called the origin of replication. Uh, this is uh, this region where protein synthesis initiated. The third region is called the leg Z region, which is coding the structural proteins which is indeed needed. And this region also consists of uh, many different restriction sites. Each of these is a unique location where the plasmid can be cut by using the restriction enzyme. A restriction site contains a sequence of nucleotides that is recognized by a restriction enzyme. Each restriction site has a unique sequence of nucleotides that is recognized and cut by a specific restriction enzyme. For example, here we are having GGATCC and particular restriction enzyme will cut into a particular location. For example, the particular sequence CTTAAG is uh, the ECOR1 restriction site. An ECOR1 enzyme attaches to the DNA strand. It recognizes the nucleotide sequence. It reads the nucleotide sequence and breaks the bonds of the phosphate backbone between the A and the G. The bonds between the nucleotides are no, not strong enough to hold the two DNA strands together. These hydrogen bonds break apart and the ends begin to separate. The cut plasmid has a sticky ends where the broken nucleotide pairs have a slightly charge in all, all this direction. This acts like a velcro. This makes them att attached to being uh, binding with a complementary sequence and reforming the hydrogen bonds. If many molecules of a single restriction enzymes are added to the test tube of a plasmid, the product is thousands of copies of a plasmid cut in the same location. The next step of gene cloning is to prepare the DNA extraction from the organism that contains the gene of interest we want to locate. Just like the plasmid DNA, this DNA also has restriction sites. The same restriction enzyme that was used to cut the plasmid DNA is used to cut the linear DNA. The restriction enzyme recognizes the CTTAAG nucleotide sequence which may occur many times in the single strand and attach to the DNA strands at these locations. Just as with the plasmid DNA, the restriction enzyme breaks the bond of the DNA's phosphate backbone. The weak bonds between nucleotide pairs are unable to hold the two DNA strands together and the pieces separate leaving the sticky ends at both the ends. The goal is to cut the DNA into gene sized pieces. The cut plasmids are mixed with the gene sized pieces of linear DNA in hope that they will bind with each other with the help of their sticky ends. Since both plasmids linear DNA were cut with the same restriction enzyme, the nucleotide sequence of the sticky ends are complementary. The slight charge of the sticky ends of the plasmid and linear DNA attaches the pieces uh, to one, one another. Hydrogen bonds from between the nucleotide pairs. The weak hydrogen bonds hold the DNA pieces together long enough for ligers to bond the DNA's phosphate backbone together. Hopefully, a plasmid will bound a plasmid will bond with one of the gene sized pieces of the linear DNA. This is now considered a recombinant DNA because it is DNA with a new combination. Not every plasmid will bond with a new piece of the DNA. Instead, they close back up the bond with themselves together. Therefore, the resulting solution will contain both recombinant and non-recombinant plasmids. From this con continuous 
recombinant and non-recombinant plasmid, we can take our desired one and plate it onto some resistant or some antibiotic plate. Only those kind of recombinant plasmid can grow who can have this antibiotic sensitive region, antibiotic resistant gene with themselves.